I will write it in their hearts, write it on their inward parts, covenant forevermore, written by the Spirit of the living God. Again, I will write it in their hearts, write it on their inward parts, covenant forevermore, written by the Spirit of the living God. I delight to do your will, O God. Your Torah in my heart today, the Torah Kabbatot may I, written by the Spirit of the Living God. You are a letter of Messiah, written by the finger of fire, engraved on the tablets of my heart, written by the Spirit of the Living God. Again, you are a letter of Messiah. Written by the finger of fire, engraved on the tablets of my heart, written by the Spirit of the Living God. Open my ears now to hear your mid-spoke speak. The Torah and the Spirit are the same to all the meek. Your told me told are speaking, your kingdom we're seeking. By the Spirit of the Living God. Open my ears now to hear your mystical speak. Torah and the Spirit are the same to all the meek. Your mystical are speaking, your kingdom we're seeking. By the Spirit of the Living God. You are a letter of Messiah, written by the finger of fire, engraved on the tablets of my heart, written by the Spirit of the Living God. I delight to do your will, O God. Your Torah in my heart today, the Torah Kabbatot may I, written by the Spirit of the Living God. I delight to do your will, O God. Habbat stila soret songha. Your Torah in my heart today, the Torah Kabbatot may I, written by the Spirit of the Living God. Mountain on fire and the shofar blew, a nation in the desert vast. Listening to you, thick clouds, smoke, and lightning, voices thunder heard. You betrothed your people by giving us your word. Natati etorati. Natati etorati. Lahem lelohim ba'yiti Natati Torati Your Torah and your spirit The word of the Lord Now pour out your spirit And we will be restored You wrote it with your finger On tablets made of stone Engrave it on the inside, and your Torah we will know. Oh, Natati Torati. Oh, Natati Torati. Lahem lelohim haiti. Natati Torati. Echtavena. 
And I'll inscribe it on their hearts. Oh, you will be mine. Ectavena, the kid Ectavena, the alibam. I'll write it on their inward parts. And I'll inscribe it on their hearts. Oh, you will be mine. A mountain on fire and a shofar blue. A nation in the desert vast, so oh, listening to you. Oh, thick cloud, smoke, and lightning, your voice is thunder heard. Then you betroth your people by giving us your word. Oh, not a tea, it's all a tea. Oh, not a tea, it's all a tea. Lahem lelohim vahayiti. Not a tea, it's all a tea. Oh, not a tea, it's all a tea. Lahem lelohim vahayiti Natsati atorati Kayek dabena bekirban Ek dabena ba'alibam I'll write it on their inward parts So I'll inscribe it on their hearts Oh, you will be mine. Ek the vein of the kinbam. Ek the vein of the alibam. I'll write it on their inward part, so I'll inscribe it on their heart. Oh, you will be mine. Oh, you will. Mine. Okay. Oh, you will be mine. You are holy. Speak, we will hear. You are holy. Your word is so near. Not saving this mind. We'll do, and then we will hear. Send a word, enlighten us. We listen as we draw near. Your word is truth. Your word is life. Your word instruct me in the night. You're the word. You're the word. Again. You were holy. Speak, we will hear. You are holy. Your word is so near. Not save an Ishma. We'll do, and then we will hear. Send your word, enlighten us. We listen as we draw near. Your word is true. Your word is life. Your word instructs me in the night. You're the word. You're the word. Listen to the meat's boat speak as we do your word. Statutes, judgments, and set up things with our hearts are heard. For those who have ears, your word is so near. Your word and your spirit are life. You're the word. You're the word. By the word, the heavens came into being. By your word, all the heavenly light. By your spirit, everything was created. 
by your spirit when your word came to life. Listen to the meat folks speak as we do your word. Statutes, judgments, and set up things with our hearts are heard. For those who have ears, your word is so near. Your word and your spirit are life. You're the word. You're the word. We're holy, speak, we will hear. You are holy, your word is so near. Not even this fire will do, and then we will hear. Send your word in life in us. We listen as we draw near. Your word is true, your word is life. Your word instructs me in the night. You're the word. You're the word. By your word the heavens came into being. By your word all the heavenly lights. By your spirit everything was created. By your spirit, your word came to life. You are holy, oh, speak and we will hear. You are holy, Lord, your word is so near. Not a saving nishma will do, and then we will hear. Send your word, enlighten us. We listen as we draw near. Your word is truth. Your word is life. Your word instructs me in the night. You're the word. You're the word. You're the word. Okay. You're the word. Our God show, city of God, only mountain. Yafe no fo artsio, beautiful high mount of Zion, city high unto the north beyond. What we can see, counter towers, gates, and walls, here God will always be. We look up to Jerusalem ascended. We look up to Jerusalem on high. We look up to our King and throne above us. For all you do for us in all our life, our life, we give you our life. Oh, our life, we give you our life. Oh, miracle maker, oh, you the earth shaker, covenant keeper. Oh, you harvest reaper, made every creature. Oh, you Torah teacher, and we worship you for all you do in our life. Give us life. City of God, holy mountain. Beautiful high mountain Zion. 
city high unto the north beyond what we can see counter towers gates and walls here god will always be we look up to jerusalem ascended we look up to jerusalem on high we look up to our king and throne above us for all you do for us in all our lives our life we give you our lives we do our life oh, we give you our life oh miracle maker oh you the earth shaker covenant keeper oh you harvest reaper oh made every creature oh you torah teacher and we worship you for all you do in our lives oh miracle maker oh you the earth shaker oh covenant keeper you harvest reaper made every creature oh you torah teacher and we worship you for all you do in our life oh give us life oh give us life give us life oh give us life give us life Thank you for your Torah and your spirit that give us life. And don't just give us life, but give us eternal life. And I thank you, Abba, that your Ruach, your Ruach is alive and breathes out your word. I ask that you'd breathe your word, your Torah, your Tanakh, into our spirits today, Lord. <clears throat> Open our mind, give us broad minds and wide hearts wide hearts, Lord, that are like the Dedach, a wide highway. I thank you, Abba, that the, that highway is huge that goes up to Zion. And I ask that you broaden and widthen and lengthen our Ruach, our spirit, to be able to walk that path in the name of Yeshua. Amen. I'd like to remind everybody who watches on the video, to like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to the Levtzion website. Levtzion uh, on, on YouTube. The Levtzion channel on YouTube. And to like the videos and subscribe. And by the way, on the videos, you can put comments. You can put questions. You can put comments. Um, I get to them once in a while. But uh, if you have questions, you can post them there on the videos underneath the videos, and you can comment. So, uh, also, Eileen's voice is developing. I'd like to announce it on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, until further posted. She's going to be putting out a Zoom, uh, um, a Zoom, uh, what's it called? Meet, a Zoom meet uh, of her teaching, of her the, the revelations and the insights that God gives her. And what is the purpose of it? It's because she's a prophet, number one, and number two, she's a fantastic student in Judaism. Woo. Bottom line, that's all there is to it. And that's, the, you know, the world needs a whole lot more people like that who, have, who are just focused on the revelation of God through Judaism. And she's a fantastic student of that. So, on the teaching... I looked up, I did a lot of research on the internet, not for the teaching, but for, to see what people say about this. Because, you know, usually I'm, I'm all by myself. I've been by myself for many, many years. And I get these amazing revelations, at least I think they're amazing revelations, and a few other people do too. But every single revelation that I get, I find it in the words of the sages. 
So early on that taught me something very important. That taught me this, that every single thing that we think about, about the scriptures, was seen and written down by the sages. Do you know who the sages are? The, the rabbis, what they call the rabbis, the sages who wrote the Mishnah, the Talmud, and the Midrashim. And every single insight that anybody ever comes up with in the Bible is already there. Now, I've checked that, and I've proven that over 20, about 22 years. And I can say with authority, because I've done the research, that every insight that everybody gets from Scripture by the Holy Spirit is already written down by the sages. And that tells me that the Torah and the Spirit are one. Now, that doesn't mean, okay, all I have to do is go read the sages. What you do is you, you, you get the revelation, and you find it, you get lit by it, you check it in the scriptures, you have the, all the scriptures paint you this picture, and then you go see it in the words of the sages. And you go, oh, we're on the same page. It's a very, very exciting to do that. Because that means you're on the same page, page as those people that God gave all the original doctrines to, instead of being on the same page with, quote, the church, which does not have those revelations. And I can say that with authority, again, because I've been doing this for a long time. And so because of that, I go to the Internet, I look in the Internet, and I see what the bulk of, quote, the church, you know, the body of believers, comes up with for a certain doctrine. And without fail, and this is no different than any other thing I teach, without fail, they do not come up with what we come up with, ever. This one is about the two covenants. And you can do the research on your own. You can go on the internet and just type in two covenants, go to YouTube, and you will find thousands and thousands of videos that all say the wrong thing. What they say is this. The first covenant was with those Jews by God, them Jews over there. But the new covenant is with us. So then where did the Jews go? They're gone. They don't, it doesn't matter. They're, they're, they're out of the picture, number one. And number two, the covenant isn't with them. And so what most people teach is there's a new covenant, a second covenant for those who are freed through Christ. And you can go do the research on your own. These are not my words. It is wrong. And I'm going to show you that it's wrong. I'm going to prove to you it's wrong. And you need to know this. Because everybody you meet who's in the church for any amount of length of time, it doesn't matter what's taught. It, they all kind of converge at the same point. There's a, there's a center point, a target, that all the teachings feel like a funnel. Like you have all the water go into a funnel and it all feeds in the same little part. That little part is this, two covenants. Every single thing. The entire doctrine of re replacement of theology is about this, is about the two covenants. But you need to know this and you need to be able to understand what you're thinking and what you're saying when you talk about it. Because if you don't, you're up against two thousand years of deception and it will eat you alive so you need to know what you're talking about you need to know the scriptures this is what they say in the bible you know show yourself a workman approved unto god and all those verses that they quote but they don't do which is study the torah so that's what i'm going to hopefully show you today is number one you need to be able to fight this false doctrine. And number two, you need to see, we need to see the inadequacy of what horrible, horrible students we are of the scriptures. We are not good students of the scriptures. I say this all the time. Eileen's a really good student of the scriptures. A really good student of the Torah. That's what I say. I'm a pretty good student of the Torah. And I used to say she's my best student. That made her mad. She doesn't like that. So I don't say that anymore. So, well, it's about Torah study. And I see her as a very good student. But the truth is, compared to those who really study the Torah, 
the sages? No. No, and that's what I'm going to show you. You're wrong. Compared to the sages who, uh, who studied, who really studied the Torah, we don't know what we're doing. We're like children playing a game. And I don't want to be like that, and I hope you don't want to be like that. So that's what we're going to look at today. So we're in Exodus chapter 24. We are at the Brit, the covenant that God makes with Israel. Then he said to Moshe, Come up to the Lord, you and Aharon, Nadav, and Avihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and you shall worship at a distance. Moshe alone, however, shall approach the Lord, but they shall not approach, nor shall the people come up with him. Then Moshe came and reported to the people all the words of the Lord and all the mishpatim. What does mishpatim mean? Judgments. Judgments. Good. This is Torah portion mishpatim. That's the name of the Torah portion. Judgments. So he says, you know, God gave him. How many judgments did God give him that day? 50-something? Very close. 53. Very good. 53. So he, he then reports these 53 mishpatim. He tells them all. And it says, uh, uh, Moshe came and reported to the people all the words of the Lord and all the mishpatim. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. That's all they say. Moshe wrote down all the words of the Lord. Then he got up early in the morning and he built an altar at the foot of the mountain, 12 memorial stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the sons of Israel and they offered olot and sacrificed shlamim. And Moshe took half of the blood and put it in basins and the other half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Now, that doesn't mean he himself put blood into the basins. That means he had the thousands of priests who haven't been called as priests yet, right? right. God hasn't called priests and Levites yet, right. has he? No. So he had young men. It says that there were young men who, who did these sacrifices, right? Did we read that? Yeah. He sent young men of the sons of Israel. This should be young, young men of the priests, but there are no priests yet. All of Israel are priests. So he just took some young men, and they, I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands of sacrifices, a lot of blood, and they took all these basins, and they threw it on the people, half the blood on the people, and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the scroll of the covenant and read it as the people listened, and they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will hear. So Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moshe went up with Aaron, Nadav, and Avihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and under his feet there appeared to be a pavement of sapphire, that's sapphire, sapphire, as clear as the sky itself. Yet he did not reach out with his hand against the nobles of the sons of Israel, and they saw God, and they ate and drank. They saw God. And they didn't die. And they, didn't die. Or did die. And they ate. In fact, not only did they not die, but they went and they had a meal with him. That's what it says. Because remember at the beginning, he said, get Nadav and Avihu and, and Joshua, and you guys come up, and 70 of the elders, and let's have a party. Let's eat and drink after we make the covenant. And, but does that bother any of you? And they saw God? So, remember Shavuot. This is Shavuot, or what's called Pentecost in, in Greek. And on Shavuot, it's called, in Judaism, what's the main title for Shavuot? I told you last week. Reb... Revelation of what? Good. The revelation of God on Mount Sinai. All of Israel saw God. All of Israel saw God. Okay. When he gave the covenant, the covenant consisted of ten things or words, not ten commandments. And then this scroll that Moshe wrote down. How many Mishpatim were in the scroll? Come on, guys. How many? 53. 53. So there's 53, quote, laws, and then 10, quote, commandments. How many is that? 63. 63. 
And then there's some other words in this scroll. That's the covenant. That's the words of the covenant. But that's what we're going to talk about. Now, this, some, uh, I think it was you last week said that the, um, that the ten words were a cube. And I said, well, yeah, no. Because they were a cube, but then they were cut in half. So it started as a cube of sapphire. And this is what the rabbis say. You can believe this or not believe this. But we know from Scripture, from last week, that both copies of the tablets, both tablets, were identical. They both had what on them? The ten words. Both tablets had ten words on them. This is, these are pretty cool, except this says Ten Commandments, but if you could really see that, let's turn the lights off so you can see it better. Somebody turn the lights off so we can see it better. If you could really see that, you could see that it's got writing on every side. And the reason for that is, they said, the rabbis and sages said this, they said, ten words on one and ten words on the other. And then another rabbi goes, no, twenty words on one and twenty words on the other. And the other rabbi goes, no, 40 words on one and 40 words on the other. And I didn't know what they were saying until I saw this picture that's from a, a Jewish source. It's written on all sides, which is 10, 20, 30, 40. That's why they say 40. So they weren't just, you know, they weren't just, you know, making up. No, on the bottom, there's nothing. So they weren't just saying stuff to say, no, 10, no, 20, no, 30, no, 40. They were saying what they knew to be a fact. They just didn't explain it. All right, so these are the, these are the three verses that say what's translated as Ten Commandments, but it's not Ten Commandments. Yes? Okay, so you said it was 53 judgments? Yes, 53 mishpatim. Okay, and then 63 what? What? No, you said that you added ten. ten. No, no, ten. I added the ten, the ten words. Oh. That were, this was the covenant, the 53 words, plus a few other, 53 uh, mishpatim, plus a few other words, plus the 10 words, the, what they call the 10 commandments. Okay. okay, so these are the verses from which they get and mistranslate 10 commandments, which is a myth. And it is not good. It's not a good myth. It's a bad myth. Hold on. It's a bad myth. The Orthodox Jews say Ten Commandments. The Hasidic Jews say con Ten Commandments. The Reformed Jews say Ten Commandments. All Messianic Jews say Ten Commandments. The entire church says Ten Commandments. And everybody's wrong. But if you ask the Hasidic Jews and the Orthodox Jews, they know what it says. They just say commandments so that people can know what they're saying. But they don't, they don't believe it's Ten Commandments. They believe it's what it says in Hebrew. Aseret Hadvarim. Say, Aseret Hadvarim. That means ten words or ten things. And all three verses say it. Ten words or ten things, not ten commandments. Yes? Why did Israel have to cut the cube? Because it's not like it was given in They didn't. God cut it. The cube was cut in half by God. Remember it says he gave him the two tablets? Uh -huh. He gave him the two tablets? Right. So, he must have so he cut it. And then it says written by the finger of God on both sides. Right. So he already cut it and wrote it before he, before he gave it. Turn the lights back on if you want. All right, so now we're going to look at this. Those 53 mishpatim are divided, let me say it this way, the entire Torah has how many, quote, laws? 613. 613. It's called Taryag. It's an acronym for the 613 mitzvot. It just is the Hebrew letters for 613. Taryag. All 613 fall into three categories. These are the categories. Mishpatim, which means judgments, like... Um, Monetary judgments, judgments of uh, uh, property valuation, uh, judgments of, you know, things that are normal that you can take to a court and get a judgment on. A dut means a testimony or a witness. This is stuff that we, we don't really know why we do it, like tzitzit. We don't know why we do this, but it 
preaches, it testifies, it speaks to other people. Pictures. Yeah, pictures, sure. Now, all of them are pictures, so that's a little bit bigger concept. This is ones that are specifically done for other people to see or hear. They're specifically done as, it, we call it outreach. They're specifically done for other people to, for it to witness or speak to them. How many are those? I don't know how many each one is. Okay. That's a good question. By other people? What do you mean? Not you, not yourself. Could be anybody. Like, uh, like Hala. Why do you make Hala? You make Hala because it talks to the people you make it for. So it could be anybody. Um, Chokim. Now, Chokim is every other thing in the, in the Torah. And this is the most scriptures or most, quote, laws are a, is a chok. Now, a chok, what the Jews translate this as, which is bad, it's not a good thing, it's a bad thing, is God said it, so we do it, we don't question. Do not question. Just do it because God commanded it. Now, that is disgusting, number one. It's unbiblical. But the other problem is the chokim... It literally means the opposite. Does anybody know what the word chok means? No, you don't know what chok means? I've taught you several times over the years. Nobody remembers. It comes from chakak. What does that mean? Chakak. Still no, nobody? To chop into. And it means to chop into the ground. It means a border, a boundary. It means to literally chop into the ground. Now, other words that come from chok literally mean a painting or a picture. So just the opposite of, we do it, we don't know why, we don't know what it is. Just the opposite. A chok is a very defined, precise, clear picture. And most of the, the, the quote laws are chokim. Shabbat is a chok. Festivals are a chok. Okay, but they say we do it because God commanded us. We don't know why we do it. Okay, so this is the verse that we're going to keep coming back to today. We looked at this last week, Exodus twenty four twelve. It's the one that says, "Come up to me on the mountain and remain there, and I will give you the stone tablets, the Torah, and the mitzvot." I'll give you the stone tablets. What's on the stone tablets? Ten words. words. And he says, I'll give you the Torah and the mitzvot. But all he's given him is ten, is, is two tablets. But he says, it's the Torah and the mitzvot. Do you see a problem here? There's not enough words on the ten words for there to be the whole Torah. And there's no scroll written. All it said Moshe wrote down, do you remember what the passage said he wrote down? What did he write down? 53 uh, 53 mishpatim and a few other things. And the ten words. And that's it. That's all he wrote. So where's the rest of the Torah? And that, and also that. The rabbis say it's the oral Torah also. Or where is that? Because he says, I will give you the stone tablets, basically which is the Torah and the mitzvot. So that tells us something. That tells us that under those 10 words is every single one of the 613. Does that make sense? Now, Eileen and I kind of figured that out many years ago. But we didn't see that the sages said it until many years later. And they sure enough say it. They say that they're just basically chapter headings. And under those chapter headings fall every single law, quote law, every single one of them. So here it is. Rashi says, the stone tablets, the law and the commandments, which I have written to instruct them. All 613 mitzvot are included in the 10 words. There it is. We didn't know that, but we determined that many years ago. Rabbeinu Saadia Gaon composed this song. It's, it's called the, the Azharot. It's a poem or a song in which he shows which of the 613 mitzvot are connected to each of the 10. So if you want to know which one falls under the 10, look for that. And I did. I, I can't read it. I just didn't have time. It's very, very, very long, the Azharot. But you can find it on the internet. 
And it'll tell you which one of the, the categories, mm -hmm. which one of the 10 categories uh, each, quote, law falls under. It's, I, I said I could read it, so what does that tell you? It's in English also. It's in English also. So, then in Sifte Chachamim, Sifte means scroll of, or numbering of, Chachamim. What's Chachamim? What's a Chacham? Anybody know? Wise man. The sages. This is Sifte Chachamim is basically the words of the sages. On Exodus 24, 12, all 613 commandments are in the Ten Commandments. There it is. Rashi knows this because it says the Torah and the commandment, which I have written. Who wrote? God. Right? God wrote it. Well, what did he write? No. What did he write? Literally. The ten words. That's it. That's all he wrote. Yes? Okay. So that means all the mitzvah, all the commandments, all the Torah was given in those ten. In those two, in those, in those those, in that cube, in that cube is everything. And then the cube is cut in half, and you got two pieces, and they're both the same. Okay? That's everything. Everything in the Torah is on those stones. And then Moshe then remade it because he smashed these. So think about that. Moshe had to carve on all five sides of each of each one, right? Because it says he rewrote it exactly as he was given it by God in the first set. Think about that. All right. Yes. It is New Jerusalem. It's also the Holy of Holies. Yes, yes. Yeah? So why do you think God gave the ten words everything of life in a cube and then cut it in half? Why? Because that's everything. The cube, what's, what was the Holy of Holies? It was a cube, right? And in that cube is the Ark of the Covenant with the two tablets. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The temple was built. And there was Holy of Holies, twice the size, exactly twice the size, right? And then the second temple was built, same exact size, a cube, 20 cubits by 20 cubits. And then these are then a picture on top of a picture on top of a picture of the final Torah set, which is the New Jerusalem. And that's where we're going at the end of the teaching. So thank you for zooming us to the, to the head of the line. So that's, that's the end of the teaching, by the way. That's exactly right. I didn't know that. Okay, well, I didn't know that. I don't know if, that, know, know if that's true. The ten words are categories for all 613 mitzvot. So I want you to understand this. First of all, you're a horrible student of the Torah. All of you are just horrible, horrible students. I'm a bad student of Torah, but you guys are horrible. <laughs> Thank you, Rabbi. No, the reason I say that is because, remember, the Torah is like a, is like a what's it called? A plumb line. Thank you. It's a plumb line, right? And it drops perfectly straight. And God wants everybody to walk up to that thing and see where you measure up. Are you crooked or are you straight up and down? Are you yashar, upright? Now, I've been studying Judaism for longer than you, so just by nature of that, I'm a better student. But that's it. I'm not a good student of Torah. I'm not. None of us are. But you're awful. And I want you to know that. I want you to understand that you've got a lot that has come into your life that has destroyed your ability to be a good student of Torah. So I want you to understand that, number one. And number two, I want you to understand, that, understand this. Everything of the Holy Spirit, everything of the Holy Spirit is in that cube. Mm -hmm. Everything. Right. There's not a single thing that the Holy Spirit ever does or says that doesn't go along with that cube. And she is our mother. She is our mother. 
That's where we're going to head at the end of the teaching. Have you guys, I'm sure you've read Psalm 119, right? Yes. Yep. Do you love Psalm 119? I, do. I, I can't read it without crying. Now, I've just got a couple here. There's every single 22 letters, right? And there's like seven or eight verses for each one of the 22 letters. And Psalm 119 is set up in such a way as to make Christians mad. That's why it's created the way it is. And when I say that, I, I, re, I mean that very literally. That the Hellenism and paganism that's in most believers comes up against that plumb line of Psalm 119 and goes, Ugh, I don't like that. That's not, that doesn't match my world. And it's set up like that specifically so that you can walk up to it Measure and see if you're straight up and down according to what it says in this. And here's just two, Aleph and Mem. Mem's my favorite because my name is Michael and I'm, you know, all I think about is myself all day long, so who cares about anything else? So I love Mem. Aleph, some people really dig it. I, I don't like Aleph so much. But look what it says. You love Aleph? Yeah, you're Ilana. That's right, you're an Aleph. <laughs> Aleph. Blessed are those whose way is tum, perfect, who walk in the Torah. Ugh. I mean, already, you know. We haven't even gotten through one verse. And it's already, okay, you know, kick that out from under you. I'm toast. I'm toast. Already. I mean, think of, now just think about the millions and millions and millions of believers who read this. What, they they got to twist it into something else. They have to. Because they can't just say their way is perfect because they walk in the Torah of the Lord, which is Judaism. So already it's a mess. But he goes on, of course. Blessed are those who guard his pikudim. Anybody know what a pikud is? Testimonies. Who seek him with all their heart. They do no injustice because they walk in his derechot. What's derech? Way or path. Good. You have ordained your pikudim. What's pikud? I just said it. Testimonies. Testimonies. Good. Testimonies. That we are to keep them diligently. We are to keep them diligently. We're to keep them diligently unless we go to church on Sunday. We're to keep them diligently. Oh, that my ways would be established to keep your chukim. What's chukim? <laughs> What's a chuk? <laughs> Chakak. Statutes. Statutes. That, okay, well, Shabbat is a chok. A hundred quadrillion Christians don't keep Shabbat. But this says, my way is perfect because I do keep your chukim. Oh, that my ways might be established in order to keep your chukim. Then I won't be ashamed when I look at all your mitzvot. What's mitzvot? What's mitzvot? Set up things. Set up things what they translate as commandments. I will give thanks to you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous mishpatim. What's mishpatim? That's the name of this Torah portion. No, not statutes. Judgments. 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 I will keep your chukim. What's chukim? Come on, we just did it. Statutes do not utterly abandon me. See, that's why you're not a good student. Because you learn something and seven seconds later you forget. That is no good. You, if you're going to learn it, you've got to learn it. You've got to know it. Now, the church isn't set up like that, is it? It's like you, you kind of hear stuff, and you kind of walk away with a big, simple, fuzzy message that makes it feel good, I guess. Sometimes it makes it feel bad. But it's a big thing. It's a big mush together. There's no specificity. Jews don't learn like that. Jews learn specifics. Okay, now comes Mem. This is my favorite. Look how it starts. By the way, I'm building an ark for, for Lev Tzion. And on the bottom, it says this in Hebrew. Ma ahavati Torah techa. Ma ahavati Torah techa. Oh, how I love your Torah. Oh, how I love Judaism. Really? There's that, there's that string. There's that plumb line. And everybody walks up to it and goes, Ugh, not so much. Oh, how I love your Torah. It is my meditation all day long. 
Think about, not think about Christ all day long. Think about the mitzvot, the quote commandments all day long. Think about the mitzvot all day long. Make, they make me wiser than my enemies. What do you think of that? For they are always mine. I have more insight than all my teachers. Now that one, I, no. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even get close to that. Because my teachers are the sages. I don't have any teachers on earth except for a couple. There's a couple rabbis that I listen to and a couple of teachers that I listen to, and that's it. Because they know more than me. But that's it. I can't find anybody else except the sages. They're my teachers. So I can't say that. I have more insight than all my teachers because I meditate on your mitzvot all day long. For your edut. What's edut? Come on. No. No. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's a bad translation. It means witness or testimony. Yeah, yeah, we can do witness or testimony. That's fine. Your testimonies or, or witnesses are my meditation. I understand more than all those who are old because I preserve you. Pikudim. What's pikudim? Te. Te. Testimonies. That's testimony. Well, edut is really witnesses. Ed, and ed is a witness. And pikudim is testimonies. I have restrained my feet from every evil way so I can keep your debrot. Now, you should know this one. What's de there? Word. Your word. That's one of these synonyms for the mitzvot, for the, law, the quote law of Judaism. This is one of the words that are synonyms in Psalm 119 for the Torah, for Judaism. Debrot. Your word, your words. I have not turned aside from your mishpatim. What's mishpatim? Judgment. Judgment. Good. You yourself have taught me. What does that mean? What does that mean? Thank you. The Holy Spirit taught me what? Taught me what? Mishpatim. Taught me what? Mishpatim. What is mishpatim? Judgment. The Holy Spirit taught me the mishpatim. I told you before, every single thing that the Holy Spirit teaches is in that cube. Everything the Holy Spirit teaches is Judaism, is according to Judaism. Judaism is the plumb line. That's what she, the Holy Spirit, teaches. She is our mother. She is our mother. Yes? Ruach. It's, we, actually, she has seven names because there are seven spirits. That's another of her names. You're right. Her other name is Jerusalem. She's got seven names that start with Ruach, spirit. But uh, name also, her name is also Yerushalayim HaChadasha, New Jerusalem. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You said Pikudim is testimonies? Pikudim is testimonies. All right, but I love that. You yourself have taught me the Mishpatim. How sweet are your words to my taste. No adultery. If a woman has a period, she is unclean for seven days plus the seven days after her period. How sweet are your words to my taste. Right? Everything, every single testimony and mitzvah and judgment, and, and statute, every single one of the 613 mitzvot is delicious if you can see the picture in it. My mom used to say that. My mom used to say that. She would say two things. Like if I would say some, some thing I got from the Torah, she'd go, oh, that's delicious. Or she'd, or she'd say, yeah, or she'd say, oh, that's gorgeous. That's what she used to say. From, the, from your pikudim, I get understanding. Therefore, now look at how he ends it. I hate. Not I, you know, will put up with. Not I dislike a little. I hate sina. Every false derech. 
That's Hellenism. Derech is way. Way. Every false derech, every false way. Any way that's not Judaism. I hate it. Look how it started. Oh, how I love your Torah. Therefore, I hate every false way. It starts with love, it ends with hate. Isn't that cool? Well, you might not like that, but I like that. Okay, so this is it, man. This is the life. If you want to know God, if you want to know what God thinks and feels and is saying, and what the Holy Spirit is saying, what is she saying, you must find it in the judgment, gesund, the edut, and the chokim. It is nowhere else. It's only in the Torah. It's all in that cube. Okay, so now we come back to the narrative at the uh, covenant that God cut with Israel. Then he took the book of the covenant and he read it as the people listened and they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do and we will hear. Okay, so there's two things here. They say, and by the way, it's, you know, two, two and a half million people saying this. And nobody taught them what to say, which is weird. How did they all say this at the same time? I, I don't even know what this, this has to be the rule. I mean, that's just weird. Moses says, okay, I just went over 53, 63 things. And they all go, they all say the same thing at the same time. Na'asevanishma. We will do and we will hear. Which doesn't even make logical sense. They should have said, nishma v'na'ase. We will hear it and then we'll do it. But they don't. They say, we'll do it and then we'll hear it. Which makes no logical sense. So my question is this. What was the covenant, what words was the covenant that God made with Israel? What was it made out of? What was the covenant made out of? It was made, the words were stone. What words was the covenant made out of? What words was the covenant made of? What words? The ten words. Anything else? The scroll that Moshe wrote. Right? Remember it said he wrote the scroll. And then they said, and he threw the blood on them. Before they said, they didn't say that. They said, we'll do. And they said it twice. We'll do it. We'll do it. But then he wrote it down. And then they said, then they added this thing. They said, Vanishma. 2412, the Torah and the mitzvot, which I have written to instruct them. The word lahorotam comes, is the same word as Torah, to instruct. It's instruction. The Torah, the instruction, and the mitzvot, the quote commandments, the set up things, which I have written to instruct them. So what was written? Literally written? The ten words and the mishpatim. The mishpatim. Not the mitzvot, the mishpatim. But he calls those, we'll say 63, we'll call it that, Torah and mitzvot. Because remember, on, those, on that cube was all the mitzvot. Yes? Yep. All 613 contained in 10. Yes? Yep. Okay. So that's why you can say that. So what's the covenant? The covenant is, here's, here's where the split comes. <laughs> Two different roads happen here. The road that traditional Christianity has followed says this. And this is all throughout Mess Messianic Judaism. Don't kid yourself. It says word for word the same thing that the, quote, church says, which is this. Their road says this. There was a covenant cut with Israel, and in the future, there will be a covenant through Christ. Right. Now, the Jews, the Messianic Jews, won't say Christ. They just say through Messiah. But they're saying the same thing. They're saying that in the future, it's not Judaism. It's Messiah. And that all the verses pertain to Messiah. Absolutely untrue. The other road, the true road, says this, that God cut a covenant using that cube and the written words with Israel, and in the future, he'll take that cube and stick it on them and in them. It's that simple. 
He'll stick in Israel. Exactly right. In Israel only. Now, if Gentiles join, awesome. Awesome. Yes. That means that physically what was written became to Yeshua HaMashiach the spiritual life. Okay. You are talking about what that road preaches that we do not want. We don't want that. Yes. That may be true. But that is not what the verses say. What we're talking about is what the verses say. Okay, the verses do not say that. The verses say this. God cut a covenant with Israel. And that covenant in the future will be the very same exact thing. That's what the verses, which I'll show you. That, that's it. That's it. That's all it says. It never says it becomes Jesus or anything like that. Now, I'm not saying that's not true, because it is true. But the verses do not say that. We only want to stick with what the verses say here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Please don't go that route, because that's not what the verses are about. That may be true. You're not hearing me. That may be true, but that is not what the passage says. We want to stick with what the passage says. If that's a different subject altogether, may be true, but it's a different subject. This subject is different. This subject is about that covenant. We're just thinking about the covenant, the future of the covenant. And here's what it says in Jeremiah 31. We looked at it last week. Days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Only Israel and the Jews. That's it. Now, if Gentiles come into it, fantastic. They always did. But it's with Israel. But then he says, it's not going to be like the covenant that I made with their forefathers. When I gave that magic cube and he wrote down the Mishpatim and then they had blood thrown on them. It's a little different. Here's how it's different. It's not like the covenant that I made with their fathers that they broke. They broke. I never broke it. They broke it even though I was a husband to them. So my question is, okay, how will it be different? And the only thing he says about the difference is, this is the covenant that I'll make. I'll put it inside of them. Put what inside of them? The cube, the magic cube, Judaism. That's it. That's all it says. And it's very important that you focus on just that. Because... The Holy Spirit is the magic cube in your heart. And so she will never, 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 or he, if you like that better, will never say anything that goes against that cube, ever. Be cannot be, cannot be broken. So if, you, if somebody tells you, well, the Holy Spirit just fell and people started barking like dogs and laughing and rolling in the aisles, where is that in the Torah? Well, you say it's not, but why should I believe you? That's the different dead This is what I'm saying. You're not good students. It's manifestation. Listen, listen, you don't know that. You're not good students. That's the basis. So, somebody says that to you. What, how do you respond? Let me go find out. Let me go study the Torah and find out. And go study the words of the sages and find out. Then you open your mouth but not until. This is why I'm saying we're not good students. So the only thing he says here about the future of the new covenant is that he takes the Torah itself and puts it on the heart of who? Judaism. The Jews. Judaism. Period. That's it. That's the new covenant. Has nothing to do with Yeshua, has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, has nothing to do with nothing except this. That the Torah will be put in the heart. Hold on. Now this is a hard thing to get your minds wrapped around because you've never been told this. Never. I know this because I go on the internet every day. That's how I know. You've never been told this. That all it says is that in the future, in the day of the Lord actually, that God will take the Torah and put it onto Jewish people's hearts. That's it. That's all it says. 
Don't take it any further than that. Don't think about Yeshua. Don't think about the Holy Spirit. Don't think about anything except that. Now, if you want to add other verses that say something else, that's a different matter. But this says this. And you have to have it tied to this. This is the covenant that God made with Israel. What was the covenant? What was the words made out of? Torah. No. What were the words of the covenant? The ten words and the mishpatim. That's the covenant. That's what's going to be written on the heart of Israel. It's that simple. Hold on. Yes. Now, that is true. That's a true statement. I say, I'll say it again. It's only to Israel. But if Gentiles want to come, fantastic. They, they always did. They always did. The Jews always brought Gentiles in. And if you would think they didn't, you're wrong. All you got to do is read the history of, of Israel and see what the sages say. They always preach to the Gentiles. Yes. Sit down, please. Okay, you're quoting Romans, you're badly quoting Romans 11. You're badly quoting Romans 11. And I had that in the slides and I took it out. Yeah, I did. But you're quoting Romans 11 that says that, that the Gentiles are grafted into a Jewish tree. And then it says some of the branches were broken off. It's quoting Isaiah 27. It's quoting Isaiah 27, saying some of the branches were broken off, but in the day of the Lord, God will save all of Israel, right? Okay, that's what you're quoting. I took it out. I took it out on purpose. Now, let's go back to the covenant. I hope you have that. If you don't have that, the rest of it's not going to make sense. So here's the, here's the basis. What are the words of the covenant? The Mishpatim and the Magic Cube, the ten words, okay? That's the words of the covenant. The written stuff that Moshe wrote and then those ten words. That's the covenant that God made with Israel. Both covenants. Now all of a sudden there's two covenants. What both covenants? And here's, I told you, it's going to split. The church teaches about those two covenants that the second covenant is Jesus. Not true. It never says that in the scriptures. Not once. It says that there is two covenants. But they've got the two covenants wrong about what they are. And I'll show you what they are. Both covenants are seen in the New Testament. Now we're going to go to Galatians chapter 3 and chapter 4. In Galatians 3, if you don't know Hebrew and you don't know Judaism, this passage makes zero sense. And if you just read it like most people read it, you go, oh, you see, that first covenant was done away with, and the second covenant is Christ. That's what people say, and they use this passage to justify what they're saying. Why? Because they don't know Hebrew, and they don't know what Judaism taught. So I put back in, if a Jew was reading this, what they would read it as, okay? There's two words for law, and this is what people don't know. There's two words for law in the, in the Bible. One is, what are the two words for law? What's one of them? Da, da, not da'at. Da'at means knowledge. Oh. Da, da. Dot, just dot. And what's the other? Torah. 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 Instruction. Torah. They're both translated as law. But you come to the New Testament, it's written in Greek and then English, and it just says law. How do you know which one to use? There's no way to know, unless you know Judaism. Mm -hmm. Even somebody who doesn't know pictures can do this, if they just know the Hebrew. So, Galatians 3.10 says this, For all who are under the works of the law, that's all it says in English, 
are under a curse. So a Jew reading that knows which word to use for law there. What is it? Dot. It's dot, which is literally a curse, which we'll talk about. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not abide by all the things written in the scroll of the Torah. So it says, all those who are... All who are of the works, works? Where is that in Judaism? Works? You can find that all through the New Testament in the, in the writings of Paul, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the church loves to say there's works and then there's grace, grace right? Yeah. Totally unbiblical. What is works in Judaism? We'll talk about that. So all who are of the works of the Torah not Torah, all who are of the works of the dot. And I'll show you that dot is the works. It's work. It literally is work in the Hebrew. Are under the curse, because it's written, cursed is everybody who doesn't abide by everything written in the scroll of the Torah. To do them. To what them? them. You know what that is in Hebrew? Not say. Not say. Asa. Work. It's the same word. Asa. I think it's the same in, in Spanish, isn't it? Aser, to do or to work, right? Okay, well, in Hebrew, aser means to do or to work. That's what it means. So, then he says, Deuteronomy 20, that's in Deuteronomy 27, 26. And then it says, now, that no one is justified by the law, by the dot, before God is evident. How is it evident? Because it says in the Bible, the righteous one will live by faith. So the Christian reading this goes, you see, law and faith. Grace, law and faith. Like they're opposites. Not true. It is opposite from dot. But it is not opposite from what? Torah, which is the covenant. Okay. The righteous one will live by faith. However... The dot is not of faith. It's not. Messiah redeemed us from the curse of the law, which is the dot, having become a curse for us in order that in Messiah Yeshua, the blessing of Abraham would come to the... What? What? What does all this talk have to do with Gentiles? All of a sudden he brings in Gentiles. As if to say, like Christians reading this go, you see, the Jews get law, but we get faith. It, it doesn't say that at all. It says the dot is no good for people because it's a curse. But the Torah is fantastic because it leads to faith, so it can go to the Gentiles. What can go to the Gentiles? The blessing. It doesn't say that. What does it say will go to the Gentiles? No! The Torah! The Torah! Let, let, let's, let's just stick with the words that are here, guys. You're adding stuff. You're saying pictures. It doesn't say anything about pictures here. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. That's why you said blessing. But what does it say here in this whole passage? What was it talking about? Dot and... Torah. It says the dot will kill you because it's got a curse associated with you. Yeah? But the law gives you faith. The Torah gives you faith. In order that in Messiah Yeshua, the blessing of Abraham would come to the Gentiles. And now he brings the Gentiles into it. Just like I said. So that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. But remember I said that comes through what? Dot or Torah? Torah. Torah. Understanding. Torah. Through Torah. Torah gives you faith. And that leads to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Just like I said. Just like I said. The Holy Spirit never, never, never discon disconnects from that magic cube. Never. And I'm trying to make it as stupidly simple as I can. From the magic cube. Just think of it like that. Okay, that's all right. So that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith by being redeemed from the curse of the dot. All right, so now you've got to know the difference between the two covenants. 
One is dot and one is Torah. Well, where in the world does the Bible say that? Where does it say in the Bible that, that the, the curse is the dot and the, the, the covenant that's a curse is a dot and the covenant that's life is Torah? All right. So we, we got two covenants. We got the covenant that's dot. Decree, and it literally means a decree, an edict, a law, a permanent law. That if you break, it's bad news, baby. That's dot. There's only one verse in the whole Bible that has the word dot. In the whole Torah. In the whole Torah. There's only one verse that has the word dot. Do you know it? There's only one verse in the whole Torah that says the word dot. Do you know what it is? Anybody know what that verse is? Yeah, all you got to do is read it. So here, it's right here. Deuteronomy 33, 2. It's the only verse that says dot. It's the only one. And it's about this. The coming of God to Mount Sinai. Right? When God came to Mount Sinai and he terrified everybody, he terrified them on purpose. Why did he terrify them? What was his purpose in terrifying Israel? So they'd be afraid of the curse. Very good. So they'd be... So they'd be <laughs> let's give them a hand. So they're very good. <laughs> so they would be afraid of the curse and run away from it. He did not want Israel to go near the curse. He... The, the curse will kill you. So why would he put... Why, then why did he give it? Mm. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? So if he doesn't want anybody to be under the curse, then why the hell did he give the curse? Now, if your mind doesn't think like that, there's something wrong. Because, I mean, that God, what's wrong with you? You need to think like that. If he didn't want anybody to be under the curse... And he certainly doesn't want his children Israel to be under the curse because it'll kill them. Why in the world would he give the Torah as a curse? He did. He did. And here's why. Say that again. Wrong. You're exactly upside down and backwards. Sorry. You're close. You said, she said to see, so we can see what's wrong and right. You're close, but that's not it. Say, a plumb line doesn't kill people. It just gives them a measurement so they can correct. There's, there's no death in that. No, not to distinguish between Jew and Gentile. Yes. Now, if he just shows that he can do that a million different ways, but this would kill you. Why would he do that? It will kill you. Now, Come, let me show that kill you. Why does he want them to be afraid? So they won't break the commandment or the word. Mm. See, now you're going straight into the dot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, it's hard to get your mind wrapped around it. Nobody gave me the right answer. It's hard to think this through. Yes, very good, Chris. Why? <laughs> You're not answering the question. You're saying, you know, yeah, he did both. I'm asking you why. So we could so we That's could, it. What? Say it again. Choose. So we could choose. So we can see there's a contrast and there's something else. Yes, listen. Choose. You don't know light unless you see dark. You don't know dark unless you see light. Right. You don't know pain unless you have pleasure. You don't know bitter unless you know sweet, right? Mm -hmm. So he gave death and he gave life, the magic cube at the same time, and said, now Israel, you choose. And they chose wrong. <laughs> now listen, God gave the covenant of filled with fear and terror, so much so that, 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 that Moshe ran away. Hold on. So much so that Moshe's knees knocked, it says in Hebrews 12, and he ran away, and all of Israel ran away. So God went like this, here, Israel, <clears throat> Right? And here's why. He wants, them to, he wants them to make a choice. And even after all that, he, they chose wrong. Well, because he said, sin is the transgression of the law. 
Yeah, but that's still not the t- concept we're talking about. We're talking about the covenant. Why would he give this amazing, life-changing covenant and say, I will kill you with it? And here's why. Choose. It's simply about a choice. That's it. That's it. You can choose one covenant or you can choose the other covenant. It's that simple. And he scared them away from the bad one so they would hopefully make the right choice. And even after that, they didn't. They made the wrong choice. To see, well, he showed us which covenant he wants us to have. And they made the wrong choice. And that's just the bottom line. That's just how it is. We've got to face reality. They made the wrong choice. But that doesn't mean he didn't keep offering the right choice. All right, now, the word dot shows up a million times with the Gentiles. Shows up one time with the Jews, with Israel in the Torah. But it shows up a bunch with the curse of the law, the way the Gentiles look at it. And I'm here to tell you, and you may not believe this, and you don't have to believe it, it's the Gentiles who are under the curse of the law, not the Jews. The Jews know their father. The Jews know that the Torah is life. They know it's a magic cube that gives us life. They know that everything, everything is in it. And I'm talking about the religious Jews, Jews who know Torah. They know that. It's the Gentiles who are under the curse of the law and always have been. Persian law is called dot in Ezra chapter 8, in Esther chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter, chapter 8, chapter 9. All in the Persian laws. It's called dot. And not, not only that, but in Ezra, in that one, it's the Persian king and he says, Jews, go back and serve your God, God with all these amazing mitzvot. And you know what? You can say this. You can say that if you don't follow the laws, they'll turn their, will pull your house down and turn it into a bathroom. That's what it says. Turn your, your house into a latrine. That's a Persian saying that. Not God. It's the, it's the Gentiles who are under the curse of the law. God said it, so I'm going to obey it. That is the curse of the law. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say to obey, and nowhere in the scriptures does it say that there are commandments. It says there's instructions, and you can listen to them, talk, or not. It's up to you. So this whole concept of commandment and law didn't come from God, and it didn't come from the Jews. It came from the Gentiles, and it's still that way to this day. Here's the other covenant. This is the good one. Torah. What does Torah mean? Instruction. Instruction. Teach. That's all it means. Comes from yara, which means to flow as water, to shoot, to direct, to cast or throw, to point with the finger, to shoot like an arrow, get to the bullseye, to instruct, to give it in, you know, details, incredible details. Yes. The Torah that starts with a tav, uh-huh. which is the last letter of the Aleph bet. Then there's a hook. A, a vav means a hook. Uh-huh. So, so it like hooks you in. in. It's like, this, is the, this is the final thing. Rush uh-huh. means head. The rush means head. Uh-huh. So it's like, it's like, look guys, I am showing you. This is the end all. I'm showing you. I'm hooking you in. I'm hooking you. Because, because this is the beginning of your life. It's and then the hay. Okay. <laughs> you got three out of four. The hay is always broken down as a dollet, as a dollet, and then like a, a, a small bob. So it's like a door. So you've got a door in there. Okay. Okay, okay. So this is the other covenant, Torah. A magic cube. Yeah. Now, let's go back to this verse that we started with. Exodus 24, the Torah and the mitzvot, which I have written to instruct them. Lohorotam. It's the same word as Torah. Instruction. And that's the, God says that is the covenant. 
in this verse. He says, this is the covenant, the Torah and the mitzvot, which I've written to instruct them. That's the covenant. So you got two covenants here. You got one that kills and scares you, and it's just it's nothing but a curse and problems, because once you try to do it, you got to do all of it, which is impossible. Well, actually, it's not impossible. Don't think it is. It's not. I mean, the, the, rabbi, I don't, the rabbis all say the same thing. It's not impossible to do the Torah. That's crazy. Who came up with that nonsense? There's stuff you literally cannot do, like you know, offer sacrifices because there's no temple. But if you've got all the tools available, there's no reason we can't do all the 613 mitzvot. No reason whatsoever. That's right. There's a lot of verses, as it, like David. Yeah. How many times did he say that about David? He kept the whole Torah. Psh, it's not that hard. So did Abraham. Well, actually, it's not easy, but it's not, it's not impossible for sure. So we got one Torah that it will kill you and one Torah that is life. But they both, and here's the thing that nobody can seem to understand, they look the same. They're the same words. They're the same words. One is the Torah and the mitzvot. And the other is the Torah and the mitzvot. They're both the same. They look the same. They're the same thing. They look the same, but they're not the same. All right, so we're talking about one thing and one thing only. What are the two covenants really? The church says, I'm going to say this again, that the First covenant was with them Jews, with Israel, but the new covenant is different. It's Yeshua, and it is not. It is a, that is a lie. It's a lie. The covenant, I've shown you that both of them are what? The Torah and the mitzvot. Both of them are the Torah and the mitzvot. It's just that they're looked at differently. That's all. They both are containing the same words. They look the same, like the magic cube and the stuff that Moshe wrote. <laughs> wow, yes? I was going to say, like, the, the Torah, you, you look at it as pictures, what you got out of it. No, we're not there. I haven't done that yet. I'm just really trying to get you guys to be able to put into words what you believe. And you can't do it. You just can't do it because you keep shooting off in other directions. <laughs> I'll do it again. One covenant looks like the magic cube and some stuff that Moshe wrote. And it's the curse of the law. It's the dot. Right. And the other covenant, what does it look like? The same thing. Which is the magic cube and the stuff that Moshe wrote. That's it. That's all I want you to know right now. They both look the same. But they're not the same. They're different. So, Here's the covenant of the Torah. Colossians 2 tells us what the covenant of the Torah is. And when you were dead in your sins, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, who's he talking to? Who's he talking to? Gentiles who are uncircumcised. He made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions. How did he do that? Canceled the certificate of debt consisting of written decrees. The magic cube and the stuff that Moshe wrote, which was against us, which was hostile to us, that's the dot. That's the dot. That's the curse of the law. And what did he do to it? He took it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. How did he nail it to the cross? I thought it was a guy that got nailed to the cross. So how did that dot get nailed to the cross? Ugh, you're so close, but that is a horrible way to put it. Okay. Come on, how did, how did the dot get nailed to the cross if it was a dude that got nailed to the cross? Kick Not going to answer me. How did the... Really? You got it right there, right next to you. How, would, how did the dot get nailed to the cross if it was a guy, a dude, who got nailed to the cross? No, you didn't. You said he was the living word. That's what you said. He was the living word. That is a horrible way to put it. He was the Torah made 
flesh. He was the Torah and the mitzvot made flesh. He was, isn't that beautiful? He was Judaism in flesh. He wasn't some mystical, magical word. He was the Torah in flesh. And that part of the Torah that, was, that became flesh, that was the curse, got nailed to the cross. Leaving what? The Torah, the instruction. The Torah, the covenant of the Torah. So both, both covenants are Torah and mitzvot. One was killed when Yeshua was killed, leaving the other one. So then because of that, because of that, therefore, because he destroyed the dot, leaving what? The Torah. Leaving what? The Torah. The Torah. The Torah. Let no one, and who's he talking to? Gentiles. Gentiles. Gentiles, let no one act as your judge in regard to food or drink, that's the kosher laws, or in respect to the festival, that's the chabdim, the moadim, the mikraot, the Jewish festivals, or a new moon, Rosh Chodesh, or Shabbat day. Things which are a shadow of what is, what is to come. Not what was to come. What is to come? And this is after Yeshua resurrected, written in the future tense. See? So that shadow is about things that still haven't come. Judaism preaches about things that still haven't come. But the body, why would he use the word body there? That's, no. No. You already forgot what he's saying. Why would he say the word body there? Well, because the body of Yeshua was... No, he doesn't say anything about the body of Yeshua. No. Huh? Shadows. Say it again. Bodies cast shadows. Right. Bodies cast shadows. He just told us about the shadow, and then he says the body. So why does he say body? Because that's what's casting the shadow. The body, what body? Belongs to Messiah. That's why he's saying it. He's saying, there's the shadow. Look at the shadow. Follow the shadow. Do the shadow. And you will see who's casting the shadow. Who's casting the shadow? Yeshua and what is to come in the future. That's the covenant. That's the covenant. That's the covenant. Not Christ. That's the covenant. The shadows. Judaism that teaches us Torah, sh sh you know, the shadow, which is the menorah, the tzitzit, the cycle of the moon, the shofar, the tefillin, the Shabbat candles, basically all of Judaism is the shadow cast by Yeshua. You want to see Yeshua? What should you do? Do Judaism and you'll see Yeshua. You'll really see Yeshua. But, but, if you do Judaism and you don't look for what's casting the shadow, that's the dot. That's the dot. So, you can do Judaism, you can, you can wear, <laughs> so you can do tzitzit, you can wear tzitzit, and it doesn't say a word to you, you're under the curse. You can keep Shabbat. You can keep Shabbat punctiliously. And it doesn't talk to you, you're under the curse. But if you do just one little tiny mitzvah, just one, and it talks to you and the Holy Spirit talks to you, that's the covenant. That's the covenant of the pictures. That's the covenant, the second covenant. It's not Christ. It's this. It's, what does he say the words of the, of the covenant are? Come on. Torah and the mitzvot. That's the second covenant. The first covenant is Torah and mitzvot. Second covenant is Torah and mitzvot. I'm glad I didn't give up. I wanted to give up. <laughs> no, don't keep your mouth shut. Don't. Don't do that. <laughs> right. So the Torah and the mitzvot, which I have written to instruct them. Instruction, teaching. That's the covenant. 
That's the second covenant. And that's what Galatians says. Now, we're going to go back to the beginning. What does the, ma- what does the, the words of the covenant look like? Describe them to me. The magic cube, the magic cube and the written scroll from Moshe. So let's focus on the magic cube. I said the magic cube, uh, the ten words, is if you make it bigger, then it's the Holy of Holies. And if you make that even bigger, it's the Holy of Holies in the temple. And if you make that way bigger, it's the New Jerusalem, which comes after the kingdom. Right? She is our mother. Okay? What does she look like? A cube. What cube? The magic, thank you, the Torah. The magic cube. The Torah. The ten words. Yes? Okay. That's what he says here in Galatians. But if you don't know that backstory of the two covenants, this makes no sense. Galatians 4, 8 through 9, and then 21 through 31. At that time, when you did not know God, who's he talking to? Better be. When you did not know God, you were slaves to those which by nature are not gods. In other words, idolatry. Who's he talking to? Gentiles. Gentiles. But now that you've come to know God, oh, what does that mean? So now they're doing Judaism. They're doing Judaism. And they know it. And he told them in Colossians, Gentiles, don't you let anybody judge you for doing kosher laws, new moon, Sabbath, and festivals. Don't you allow those Gentiles to tell you not to do Judaism. Because you know it's a shadow cast by Yeshua. So here he says... Now that you've come to know God, so now they're doing Judaism, how is it that you turn back, back again? To what? To their idolatrous Gentile ways. But now they got another problem. To the weak and worthless base things, he's talking to Gentiles, that's his audience, what are the weak and worthless base things of the world? Gentile ways. Gentile ways. Yes? Idolatry. So they're turning back to that, but they're also turning back to something else, which is even worse. This is even worse. Now this is where the church goes. They're getting under the law. And they've left the freedom of Christ, and now they are now called anathema. That's what they say. These are not my words. They are anathema because they're turning, they're becoming Judaizers. It doesn't say anything like that here. Those are made up words. Tell me, you who want to be under the law. Remember, there's only one, there's only one word in English for law. What are the two words in, in Hebrew for law? Torah and, Torah and dot. So which one do you think he's saying? You want to go back under the dot? You want to do Judaism as dot? Are you out of your mind? Don't you listen to the... They both say law. You who want to be under law, don't you listen to the law? It's not law. It's dot and Torah. You who want to be under the dot, why don't you listen to the Torah? That's what he's saying. Don't you, do you not listen to the Torah? For it is written in the Torah that Abraham had two sons. One by the slave woman, Ishmael, and one by the free woman, Yitzchak. But the son of the slave woman was born according to the flesh. So, listen, you can do Judaism in the flesh. And you can do it really, really good in the flesh. But if it doesn't talk to you, it's the curse. And that's what they were doing. These are Gentiles, remember. Remember? He's talking to Gentiles. And these are Gentiles who are like doing the law punctiliously, but they've forgotten the two covenants. They've forgotten that the covenant of instruction means that stuff instructs you. All right. That's all I want to say about that right now. So he says, this is... (laughs) Now look, look, look. Here's where the church loses its mind. This is speaking allegorically. Messianic Jews hate that word allegory. All it is is metaphor. That's all it is. 
And we know what that means, pictorially, metaphorically. So, in the Torah, it's talking metaphorically? Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's a parable in the Torah. For these women are two... So, so what the church says, for the most part, and, and I've done my research so I can say it, is the first covenant was to those Jews... And the next covenant, the good covenant, the new covenant, is Christ. And these horrible Galatian people were getting under the Jewish one. But the truth is, those women are two covenants. And he's going to be clear about it. One coming from Mount Sinai, giving birth to children who are slaves. She's Hagar. Okay, so Hagar is a picture of the magic cube putting people under bondage. Does that make sense? Because it's at Mount Sinai. That's where the magic cube was given. One coming from Mount Sinai giving birth to children who are to be slaves. The curse of the law makes people slaves. I don't care how you cut it. If you try to obey a law, you are a slave. And if you just say, well, I just try to obey the love one another. Sorry, that's the curse of the law. No such thing. She is Hagar. Now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem. What does that mean? The Jews doing Judaism as the curse of the law. For she is enslaved with her children. So the giving of the covenant at Sinai is bondage? Is it? Is it? Yes, yes, he gave it as the curse. At the same time, he gave it as the Torah. That's right, so they could choose. Enslaved with church. So the giving of the covenant at Sinai is bondage. That's what most of the church believes. And yes, yes, he gave it as bondage. And then he scared them away from it. But the Jerusalem above is free. She's our mommy. For it's written, rejoice, barren one, you who do not give birth. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the children of the, of the desolate one are more numerous than the one who has a husband. So what's it saying? It's saying Hagar is a picture of the magic cube that kills you. And Sarah is a picture of the magic cube that gives you life. But they both look like the magic cube. Make sense? It just depends on how you look at it. Now here's, I'm going to start getting freaked out here. I love this part. And you, brothers and sisters, who's he talking to? Gentile believers, like Isaac, are children of promise. But just like at that time, the son who was born according to the flesh, those doing the dot, persecuted the one who was born according to the Spirit. Those who can see the metaphor, the allegory, the picture. The shadow. That's it. That's how it is now. Nothing's changed. You got people doing, trying to obey the law. I don't care what they're, who they are, Jew, Gentile, Christian, I don't, it doesn't matter. If they're trying to obey a law, they are under the dot. If they're l letting the shadow that they're doing show them what's casting the shadow, what are they under? The Torah. Torah. The Torah. Right. But now look what it says. And this is what you've got to apply to yourself. You've got to apply this to yourself. Because if you leave here and you don't apply anything to yourself, I have not done my job. And it's a waste of time. Just listen, please. But what does the scripture say? Drive out that slave woman and her son. Who is the slave woman and her son? The dot. Doing Judaism as dot. Get it out of you. Yes. We have to apply this to ourselves. You've got to get rid of this mentality that you're like a magnet. You keep slapping back. Well, what about Christ? What about Christ? What about Christ? Get rid of it. The Torah, the covenant, I'm saying get rid of it because it's a different subject. 
But this subject, you've got to get in your heart. It's the first thing God gave, and it's the first thing that Paul taught everywhere he went. That there are two covenants. There's the dot, and there's the pictures. And that's it. And if you can't put that succinctly with your mouth, in what you believe and how you want to live, you don't have it. You don't have it down. You've got to get it down. You've got to drive that mentality out of you. Because how are you going to go teach other people how to see the Bible as pictures if you keep slapping back to that Hellenistic garbage of the New Testament that you've been taught or the garbage of we have to do the Jewish things? Why? Because we have to do the Jewish things. All right, but what are you getting from it? We have to do the Jewish things. I want to obey God. I want to serve God and obey Him, His commandments. It's nonsense and it's death. And you've got to drive it out of you. For the son of the slave woman will not be an heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brothers and sisters, Hagar inside of you and me will not inherit what Sarah is going to give us. Which is not the kingdom. In this case, it's beyond the kingdom. It's the new Jerusalem. The, new, the kingdom is only a taste of the new Jerusalem. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You have the, the magic cube, and the magic cube bigger is the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle. And the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle bigger is the Holy of Holies where? In the temple. In the temple. And the Holy of Holies in the temple is a picture of what? The, no. The Holy of Holies in the temple in the kingdom. Right? For a thousand years. But then after that is going to be even bigger, the, the New Jerusalem. But they're all the magic cube. Okay? Drive out the dot from you. And only you can do this. I can't do it for you. I can hammer on you all day and all night with it. But unless you do the work to get rid of it, it ain't, she ain't going to come out. And her son ain't going to come out. You remember... When Sarah told Abraham, get her out of the camp. I know you were. What did Abraham say? He kind of. Well, the rabbis say he went nuts. He didn't want to do this. He absolutely did. That's his baby. That's his, that's his child. And I'm supposed to drive him out of my camp? Yeah. And God tells Abraham, do what she says. Listen to her. Listen to her. And then listen to her. And he says this, tell me, you who want to be under dot, do you not shema? Listen to the Torah? Now that's the difference in the two covenants. The first two times that God offered the magic cube, what did Israel say? All that the Lord has spoken will do, not us say. But the third time, after they threw the blood on him, after the third time when he wrote it down, what did they say? We will do and then we'll listen. And that's the second covenant. And that's what was added. That's all that was added. One word, the nishma. All the words which the Lord has do, spoken, we will do. Not a say. All the words the Lord has spoken, we will do. Not a say. But the third time, what was added is, not a say, the nishma. We will do and we will hear it. Hear the thing that we do. What it's saying to you. Yes. No, not what it's saying to you. What you do. I'll listen to what I do. And then I'll hear it. It's the same thing as a shadow. Yeshua is casting a shadow, right? Shadows made out of Judaism. If you do Judaism, looking for it to talk to you, it's the same as listening to it, listening to it talk to you. It's the same thing. Same thing. So what was added? What was added is, listen. That's the second covenant. The nishma. Naase literally means works. It literally means works. So, listen, we don't know what this is nowadays. So Paul writes, works of the law, works, works, you're under works, do works. 
and the church reads that, and they don't know what they're seeing. Most people don't know what that is. But a Jew reading it goes, okay, not a say. They said it twice. Not a say. We'll do it. 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 Yeah, no listening. <laughs> That's right. No hearing. It's just doing. So the first covenant dot is doing. Not a say. The second co covenant adds hearing. Yes? Now, here's the verses you need to memorize. It reminds me of the verse that says, those with ears who don't hear. Yes, the, there are those who have ears who, can, who will not hear. Who will not hear. It's all over the scriptures. Yes, ma'am. Sarah, Sarah is playing, is she playing the part of the uh, Holy Spirit when she, she comes? She yes, that's where I'm getting. That's where I'm, that's where I'm getting. That's where I'm getting. So, the covenant of the curse is to do, not a say. Here's Mount Sinai. Here's the second covenant. What was added? Hear. To hear. Now, these are verses you must know. You've got to know these. You passed out the papers, right? Yeah. Thank you. All right, so they're on there. You need to know these verses because these don't say listen to God. They don't say listen to God. No. They say listen to what you do. They say listen to the meets vote. It doesn't mean listen to the meets vote talked about or spoken or preached. It means listen to the meets vote, literally, that you do. That you do. That you do. You do it, and then it talks to you and you hear it. So if you're not doing it, how are you going to hear it? There's no, it's impossible. So, what happened is, and this might bother you, but you've you got to be able to say this. The church as a whole kicked Judaism out of its midst so they cannot do the things. So how could it possibly talk to them? Right? Because the Holy Spirit only talks Torah. She only speaks what's in that magic cube. Yes? She's our Holy, the Holy Spirit is our mother. Sarah is her. She's a picture of our mother, which is the New Jerusalem, which is the big giant magic cube, right? 1,200 mile magic cube, which is nothing but Torah. And she said... Get that curse out of you. Drive it out. That's what the Holy Spirit says. It doesn't say, oh, let me pray for you and the Holy Spirit will just speak to me whatever she speaks or whatever he speaks. That's what they say. Whatever he speaks to me. No. No. That's not according to Torah. It's not according to Torah. Torah is you go into the Torah and you find out what does Torah say? What does the Holy Spirit say about anything? And she will talk to you if you do Torah. And here's the verses that say she'll talk to you. These are only some of them. These are not all. These are just most of them. Okay? And what they say is this. If you will do and listen to his setup things, because you listen to these judgments, if you listen to my setup things, my meets vote. Now, these two, if you don't know these, you don't know this concept. And this is the big ones. Verse, uh, Deuteronomy 11, 13. I'm sorry, it's not there yet. I'm sorry. It's uh, actually 11, 27 and 28. Those are the two. 11, 27 and 28 say this. The blessing if you listen to the meets vote. And the curse if you don't Listen to the meets vote. Listen, listen to me. The curse, if you don't listen to the meets vote, how can you hear the meets vote? By doing it. By doing it, and then it talks to you. Good. The blessing, if you listen to the meets vote. Yes? 
So that also says you have to do it. And then listen. Uh, okay, okay. You're, you're, you know what? You're absolutely right, but that's too deep for me right now. <laughs> that's too deep for me. This you need to learn because these are verses that tell you exactly what we're after here. And they're very. No. No. She's a pic, she is not a picture of the dot. Hagar is a picture of the dot, period. And Sarah is always, always has been, from the beginning that of it, when it talks about Sarah. Even though, even though she did stupid stuff. Even though she did stupid stuff. Even though she did stupid stuff. She's always a picture of the Ruach HaKodesh. Always. She was a human, though. <laughs> so, Deuteronomy 11, 27. I'm going to go over them again. See, I know when there's resistance, I know that this is the point I need to stick on. I know I have to. 11, 27, and 28. You've got to know these. Listen to me again. The blessing if you hear the mitzvot. The curse if you don't hear the mitzvot. It doesn't say if you don't obey it. It's the word shema, hear. And it doesn't say the curse if you don't do it. It doesn't say that either. It says the curse if you don't listen to it. So you can do it all day long. And you still get curse. Why? Because you're not listening. Right, because you didn't listen. It's that simple. It's that simple. You get the blessing, whatever the blessing is, if you, if you what? If you listen to, to what? To the mitzvot, to Judaism. I'm going to say it again. You get the blessing if you what? Hear, hear what? what because I know what's in your heart. In your heart is hear God. No, no, I'm hearing the word. The word. I'm just looking at that. And it's... Okay, but you, you didn't hear me. I know what's in your heart. I know because you've been taught this your whole life. What you've been taught is I want to hear. Jesus what? Who do you want to hear? The Lord. The Lord right. And so you read this, and it, it kind of does a number on your brain, unless you really, really get this down. It says you get the curse if you don't what? Do. No. Hear. Hear what? Hear. Let's do it again. You get the curse if, if you don't listen to the mitzvot. You, okay, say you keep Shabbat beautifully, and you do it consistently. Does that bring the blessing? No. no. It might. It might. If you, listen. if you listen to it. But if you don't listen to it, what do you get? The curse. Okay? This is all, it's starting to sink in. This is hard to get. It's really, really hard to get because you've been taught your whole life the opposite. I want to hear God. I want to hear God. I want to hear God. I want to hear the Holy Spirit. But the thing is, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, do the mitzvot and listen to it. And you'll hear God. It took a while. <laughs> yes, it takes a while because you've been told your whole life something different. I'm telling you something you do not know. I'm not telling you something you know so you can go, hey man. I'm telling you something you don't know that you need to learn. Okay? Do we have it? Yes. Awesome. So, if you want to inherit the new Jerusalem, the day of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant, the ten words that were in it, all the way down to the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle and that whole stream of what that gives us, which is the words of the Holy Spirit, you have to listen to it in order to get the blessing that it gives you, that the magic cube gives you. And that magic cube is 
what? Torah. Torah and the mitzvah, which is the new Jerusalem. She's our mother. Torah is our mother. Torah is our mother. One last thing. Where does it say in the Bible that, the, that our mother feeds us with milk from her breasts and it's Judaism? Isaiah, Isaiah what? That's a big book. <laughs> oh, I thought you actually gave me the answer. I thought you gave it. It's chapter 66. It's the last chapter. Isaiah 66. It says, those who love the festivals and grieve over the loss of Judaism love our mother and her nourishing breasts pump out milk to us, which is Judaism. It's the Torah. Milk is Torah. Listen up. Listen up. What are the two breasts? What are the two mountains? What are they? Mount Zion and... No. 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 No, those are thousands of miles away from each other. The cleavage is small. Come on. They're mountains right next to each other. Yes, Mount of Olives. It says, <laughs> so close. It says in Kings, and they went up to the top of Mount of Olives where God was worshipped. So that's where the Torah comes from. It comes from those breasts. And she is our mother. Yes, ma'am. Uh, one thing that might make it easy, I don't know, maybe Sarah, the word Sarah is like Sarah, princess, okay? And Hagar is like immigrant, foreigner, alien. And we, Sarah is princess and Hagar means foreigner, alien. Yeah. Okay, it's hold, like a okay, that makes it much more difficult. Okay. Okay. Much, much more difficult. Because you're laying a metaphor on top of a metaphor. Okay. I'm trying to make it simple so I can smash the disgusting magnet that slaps back on what you've always thought. That ain't going to do it. You've got to make war on this thing to get rid of it. You've got to get rid of it. And I'm going to say what this horrible, disgusting, evil, filthy thing that keeps sucking you back is. I'm going to say it one more time. One covenant is with those Jews. Look. And it's the law. But we have a new covenant, which is Christ. That is disgusting. Both covenants are what? Come on. Thank you. Torah and mitzvot. That's both covenants. That's both covenants. One is the curse, and one added listening to Judaism, to the act itself. And that's it. Is your hand up? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is valid for both Jew and Gentile to make us one. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And it is the only thing that's going to make both Jew and Gentile one. And that's what Shaul makes clear so many times. It's the only thing that should be our common denominator. Mm -hmm. The covenant of Judaism. Mm -hmm. As pictures. Let's pray. This, this was a hard one. I, I enjoyed it, but it was tough. It was tough to wade through. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, listen, I'm doing my best to... <laughs> made me hungry. I'm doing my best to smash at it as nicely as I can, but it's got to be smashed at. That was delicious. <laughs> that was gorgeous. <laughs> right. Okay, let's, let's pray. Lord, I, I ask that you would not just let this message that you gave so clearly go out from me, but it would go out from many, many other people. I ask that you would make it a revelation that would go out to your whole body and that you would teach your body through many, many, many voices, just as many voices that have said the opposite and muddied all of our doctrine and our beliefs up and made it so messy. I ask that you would clarify this, that the Torah and the Spirit are one, 
in the name of Yeshua. Lord, set this in our hearts like a gem, like the gems in the breast piece that were set into those settings in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Let's do Kiddush.